eyes front, mister. <laughs> hey, y'all, it's your girl, Pam Moolah, baby. And if you're new to my channel, please like, share, subscribe, bump the bell for notifications. On my channel, we talk about everything under the sun, especially in trucking. I talk about the unspoken truths, and I don't do nothing but keep it real, raw, and uncut. You may like it, you may not. But today's topic is the owner-operator's mentality. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. All right. So everything that I'm getting ready to discuss is based on my experience and some of the things that I've seen and read on Facebook and Instagram, okay? By no means am I saying that all of us are like this, but it does not take a rocket scientist to nail becoming an owner-operator down to a science. I know I'm new to becoming an owner-operator. I brought my, my, my truck in November, so please don't drop down in my comments. Well, you just became an owner-operator. You don't even know. Um, I still have to run my truck. And again, it's based on, you know, how I've been feeling and also some of the things that I've seen on social media. Okay. The owner operator's mentality, all of it is not good. Be, becoming the owner operator can be a blessing or a curse. It is all about discipline. And that's just my opinion. All right. And y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, but you have to be a disciplined ass motherfucker when it comes to buying your truck. I get it. You've purchased, you've made a big purchase. You've earned the right to do what you want by all means. But if you have a high overhead, you didn't buy your truck cash, you got a large truck note, you got a large trailer note, then it, it, maybe this video is for you. Maybe I'm talking to you. I don't know. I personally don't have a large overhead. My truck note is very, very small compared to some of the numbers that I've heard out in the world and in the truck stops, you know, and, and coming from trucking companies. Okay. I am grateful for the truck note that I have. And thankfully I'll be finished paying for my truck in two years. All right. January, 2022. I'll be, uh, not 2022, 2023, I'll be finished paying for my truck. All right, I'll outright own my truck title in hand. Okay, God willing. But becoming an owner operator, okay, if you don't have discipline, you're coming from a company driver, someone who's possibly made gross or net $800, to $1,200 a week. Not saying that a company driver couldn't make more if you're running local, you're running per hour. I'm not talking to, to you. I'm talking about those who run OTR. You know, those who have to be out, you know, at a minimum 21 days with two to three days home. Someone who's coming from that and all of a sudden now they, they get thrown into owning their own truck. The first time you look at that load, boy, your eyes is going to be The first thing you're going to say to yourself after, you know, coming out of shock is why haven't I become an owner operator sooner? I personally didn't feel that way because I set myself up to be a company driver for two years. And after that, I said that I would go out and buy my own truck. I wanted to get my feet wet in the industry first. So, Seeing the load board wasn't a surprise to me because I had already been speaking to owner operators as I was on the road. So I understood that it was money to be made outside of being a company driver. Now, when you see these numbers, because as a company driver, you're chasing the miles. As an owner operator, you're now chasing cents per mile. So of course, you're seeing loads 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 3,000, right? And don't get, don't get me wrong. Just because you see that number doesn't mean that's necessarily beneficial for your truck. 
okay? Because they can have you running from Florida to West Bubba Fuck. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's totaling out to a dollar and something uh, per mile. But you have to understand your numbers. That's not what this video is about. It's about owner-operator's mentality. Some owner-operator's mentality, right? Okay, so you see these numbers. And as I said, you... you probably was making $800, $1,200 a week. Now, all of a sudden, you're seeing these big numbers and you're losing your fucking mind, okay? You have to discipline yourself. Will yourself in. Because with that comes, you now, I can make this money so quick. You know, and especially if you grew up in the era that I grew up in, the dope boy era, you know what I'm saying? Quick money, fast money, you, you, you're trying to get in and out. You're you going to get this cash. You're going to make it do what it do. But you have to be very careful with that because now you have to remember you have overhead. If you have a large overhead, you know what I'm saying? You getting this quick money, you know, and now all of a sudden you find yourself living outside of your means. And when I say living outside of your means, here it is. You, was, you used to budgeting on and living on $800 a week. And now all of a sudden, you know, you netting at a minimum $3,000 a week. So... You had not even given your, yourself time to process this and to grow into your business. You buying houses, you buying fancy cars, you, you buying designer clothes, you buy, buying designer bags. You know, mama needs a new coat, baby needs some new shoes. And next thing you know, you are drowning in debt. You have to remember, yeah, that's a large number, but you still have overhead. You got to pay fuel, insurance, your truck note. And let's not forget taxes, because Uncle Sam won't his, okay? And he ain't going to play with you, okay? That's the pimp of all pimps. He created pimps. You better have his money. He ain't playing, okay? All right. Yeah. So, all that money is technically not yours. <laughs> yeah, it's not yours. And I don't care if you have your own authority or not. You know, you have some kind of overhead. You want to get to that status where eventually, you know, your truck is paid off and you can minimize overhead. Your trailer is paid off and you can minimize your overhead. We all want to get to that status. But coming in, you have to be very careful with this. Folks find themselves in trouble with this. is a blessing and a curse. So remember to modify your living and grow into your business. All right? And a lot of times, now that we have our own, you know, truck, you know, whether we're running under someone's authority or we have our own authority, no one is telling us what to do. No, we're not accountable to no one but ourselves and our family. You can find yourself home a lot being an owner operator. And I speak with this. I, this is coming from experience, okay? I came from a company where I had to run 21 days out. I would get five days home, okay? Anything past that, I would have to get approval. Or I would have to call with some excuse as to why I can't get back on the road right away. Now, no one is calling my phone telling me, uh, Pam, you need to get back to work. So when I come home and I say, um, yeah, I'm going to be home just for like four days. Four days turn into five days. Five days of turned into two weeks. And that's the longest I've ever stayed home. That can be catastrophic to your business. Okay. Fortunately enough for me, I don't have high overhead and I have support at home. A lot of drivers don't have that. Okay. So don't get caught up in this. Oh, Lord, I can finally breathe. Nobody telling me what to do. I'm just going to stay home mentality. That can bring your business down, especially if you set goals for yourself. You know what I mean? If you are setting goals for yourself to obtain net 100 to $150,000 a year, you can't do that being home all the time. You still have to run just like you was a company driver. You have to have that mentality. And, you know, I'm a company driver. I'm going to stay out, you know, maybe five to six weeks, especially somebody like me. I live in Miami, Florida. And if you're an owner operator, you already know ain't shit coming up out of here. For me to run local, or and when I and what I would consider local would be running the state of Florida. I look at the low boy. We we see I'm seeing rates, you know, 93, 95 cents a mile. I, my truck don't move for that. Period. 
So I have to do I have to do OTR if I want to make good money. And I'm not going out there to, to keep coming back in. So yeah, when I do go out and run, I'm running for you know two weeks at a time. And I and I come back and you know I'm and I'm home for a few days and I go back out again. But like I said, I have the support where I could stay home, you know, two weeks if I wanted to, but everybody doesn't have that. Some of us, you know, we understand that we don't have that, but we still want to, you know, you can get you can become content and lazy. You know what I'm saying? You get home to especially if you got a nice house. Especially if you got friends who are social, you know, socialites. You want to be on all, you want to be on every scene. You don't want to miss nothing. You know what I'm saying? Especially now you, you making good money and then in your back, in the back of your mind, you're like, I'll catch up. It's easy for me to catch up. You know what I'm saying? Two weeks ain't going to hurt. And then you keep telling yourself this. You keep telling yourself this. So now you're not meeting your goals. So we have to be very, very careful with that. Okay. And I'm not saying all owner operators are like this, but that's just an observation that I've noticed. Okay. Owner operators, most that I've talked to that are in my circle, I have a tight knit circle. Most of us are owner operators. And I try to only surround myself with people who are doing things in the industry and outside of the industry. And most of us, our goal is to work smart and not hard. And when I say smart and not hard, meaning I've spoken to drivers who will burn the highways up. Whether it's highway, it's, it's mountain driving from the East Coast to the West Coast, putting wear and tear on the truck. They just chasing the cents per mile. For me, I, I, I just don't understand that mentality because if I can run from here to uh, Tennessee, which is my from Miami to Tennessee, and um, you know just to get out of Florida or whatever, and I'm not, I'm just using that as an example. I get out of Florida and I may run up to uh, Illinois, and then from Illinois to Iowa, and then from Iowa to maybe Texas, and then from Texas to Tennessee, and then Tennessee back to Miami. I ain't going through too many mountains. I ain't burning up fuel, you know, I'm making sure that my the weight on the truck, you know, on the trailer is not so much, you know, because you got some drivers out here, they don't, like I said, they don't give a fuck. They just looking at the cents per mile, they don't care about the weight, they don't care about none of that. I watch all that because I've learned from experience since I've been out here, weight on the trailer does matter, it, it, and especially with these fuel prices, you just don't want to do it. That's eating into your profit. So by the time you don't ran the West the, to, to, um, California, I done did these little lows in that one little week, and we made the same uh, money, or I probably done made more than you, and I ain't spend that much in fuel. So, to me, the logic of it, you know, and I'm not, people can do what they want to do, but you have to work smart out here and not hard. A lot of owner operators, you know, they have this, especially the men, y'all, you guys have these, these egos, you know, that you have to feel like a real trucker, and now you're away from your family for days and weeks at a month at, at a time, you know, because I'm a man. I have at it, boo. But I'm not, I, in my truck, I'm not doing it. I'm, I, listen, I'm 45. I am not, finna, I'm not in the, in the position or in the mood to be running all 48 states. I'm just not doing it. I didn't do it when I was a company driver and I'm not doing, and I'm not doing it now. Now, that may be a bad thing as an owner-operator to some people, but that's my mentality. And um, like I said, mo the people that are in my close-knit circle, and now when I say they're doing the damn thing, they feel the same way. All right, y'all can drop down in the comments and let me know if I'm wrong about that. I'm not going to disagree with you because we all have our ways. You know what I'm saying? It's all based on location a lot of times. Like I said, I'm in I'm in South Florida. Okay. I don't have the luxury of 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 running, you know, uh 250 miles away from home and and making money. Some people have that luxury. I don't. But that don't mean I'm getting ready to go from Miami to, uh, to, to, to California. And not to say that I won't. You know what I'm saying? But especially right now I'm not doing it in the winter months. 
Uh, no, ma'am. I just don't want to deal with it. Why? Because I don't have to. I know that, that was the reason for me purchasing my own truck. So I can go where I want to go, when I want to go, how I want to go, and come home when I want to come home. That, I mean, is it a bad thing? It could be. Like I said earlier, it, it very well could be because with the home time, you know, you going home, you know, you live, you know, you live in Miami, Florida and you going home, you know what I mean? Every weekend. And again, we have different low boards out there where, you know, some people are seeing things that I might not see, but is that conducive to your, your business? It's just, you know, I don't know. You, you, you guys, you guys tell me, you know, and are we using the truck? to flip to to bring in passive income i'm doing a lot of things you know within trucking that's outside of the truck to bring in passive income and i'll discuss that in another video but if you grew up in the 90s like i did you know the dope boy era that's what i grew up around you get that fast money because that's what it is in trucking if you are on the operator, it's fast money. It can be fast money. If you are working your truck right, moving your truck right, the goal is to flip that money. Not everybody wants to flip the money, their, their money. Some people are not as adventurous and, and spontaneous and willing to take the risk with their money. But me, I am willing to take the risk. Like I said, I'm 45. Listen, I ain't trying to be only burning up these roads at 60 and 70. And I'm not promised to, to have a limb or to keep my eyesight tomorrow. So I need a means to fall back on. And I'm using trucking to do that. That's just my mentality, okay? That's what, an octopus, they have eight arms, eight tentacles, so they can multitask and do hatty hands and some different things. If you aren't doing that in trucking, I don't know what to tell you. Right now, trucking is 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 on fire on Instagram. It's on fire on Facebook. That this is the industry that you want to get into. Everybody is seeing it as a get rich quick scheme. I get it. Some will fail because this is not for everybody. You have to know what you are doing. And if you know what you are doing, I feel you should be putting your money into other things, investing, real estate, uh, other LLCs. You want to leave something behind for your family. You may have a son or a daughter who may not want to be into the trucking industry. Some people, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I started the L, I started my business so I can leave something behind for my, my, my family, my kids. Who's to say that they want to drive a truck? So why not? Invest that money into your kids and start other businesses, the businesses that they would like to start. Use this money to do that for them. You know what I mean? Take some trips, take some vacations. You want to be able to retire. Because, I mean, again, if you're an owner operator, you're paying your own taxes. You know, you're investing into yourself. Are you investing into your own 401k? Are you paying, you know, your own health insurance? Um, hey, this, this money will come and go. You still have to take care of yourself. And again, that's a part of your overhead. You know what I mean? That don't stop. 401k don't stop as long as you're out here running on the road. You know, y'all forgive me. I, I do live in the hood. So if y'all, you hear the boom, boom in the back, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is. Okay. So yeah, you have to work smart and not hard. And that's just my mentality. Use this as, you know, a means to, to gain access to other things. All right. And not live outside of your means. And the last thing that I want to talk about and touch on the mentality of an owner operator is looking down on company drivers. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Especially if you became, you came from a company driver. Why am I seeing arguments on Facebook in the comment section about who's better? 
not everybody wants to be an owner operator. Some folks just don't want the responsibility that comes with being an owner operator. And truth be told, a lot of times, if that company driver knows how to work that truck, they can make some really good money. And sometimes they'll make just as not, just the same as an owner operator and don't have the responsibilities. Okay? And that's like finding a needle in a haystack. I'm not saying that that's something that you could just jump out there and do and find. But we know there's some drivers out here that don't own a truck that's making just as much good, as much money as we do. You know, only thing is they may have a cap. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not siding with drivers who say, man, I make just as much money as you do. Um, yeah, for that week, maybe, you know what I'm saying? That, that particular week. But if we wanted to like have a real competition, I promise you the owner operator is going to make more money. Okay. But that's not what I'm trying what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is the looking down, you know, man, you, some of y'all, y'all, you've been a company driver for 25 years. Why you ain't became an own operator? Why you don't own your own own truck? Yeah, because that man don't want to and don't have to. He is comfortable with being a company driver, and that's okay. Now I've seen some company drivers, you know, take digs at owner operators on Facebook in particular. You know, oh yeah, yeah, the, the tires, the tires on your truck raggedy and bald head. Mm. And I'm siding with the company driver because a lot of you goddamn owner operators, you don't take care of your goddamn truck. You don't get DOT inspections. You don't do the maintenance on the goddamn truck. You don't get an oil change. You don't do nothing but truck. All you do is get in that bitch and drive. Shit falling apart, keeping me up at night because it's rattling and, 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 and um, what they call that shit? Uh, the, the goddamn air compressor keep popping off every five seconds. Take care of your goddamn truck. Plain and simple. Especially if you've been out here 25 years. Bro, you should know better. Sis. What the fuck is you doing with your money? But here it is, you on Facebook with your saying it with your chest, with your chest poked out. You know that mentality. You, you, you know the ones who be popping that shit all in the comments and then going home sleeping on an air mattress. Cut it out. Cut. Cut it out. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. It can be a blessing and a curse. All right. You have to have discipline to be an owner operator. You have to learn how to prioritize yourself. You have to set goals for yourself being an owner operator because no one is, you're not accountable to no one. If you don't have that drive to want more as an owner operator, then you should have just stayed a company driver. Because if you've had if you had that goal or that mentality to go out and purchase a truck, then it's already in you to want more for yourself. That's what it says, at least in my eyes. It says that you're somebody who wants more. So if you want more, why not be more active in your business to help it grow? You cannot purchase, you know, your second truck or your third truck. If you home all the goddamn time, if you blowing through your money on bullshit, like, you know, what are you doing? Set short, short term goals and long term goals. We all have to do it. Get you some passive income. You know, surround yourself with other owner operators and fleet owners who can mentor you and help you understand and give you the game. Because truth be told, there's a lot of owner operators out here that will hit a pot of gold. And when I say pot of gold, meaning that they'll find maybe something that's dedicated with Amazon, and I'm just using that as an example, FedEx or whatever, right? Where they home in their bed every night, they, they hitting a lick. You know, but they'll, they'll post it on Facebook. Man, I done found a lick, man. Dropping hook, da da da. The minute you get in the comment section asking them, what about? Oh yeah, it's crickets. They ain't willing to share, but you already locked in. so. What's, why not share, you know what I'm saying, the wealth? That's the mentality a lot of times with owner operators. And it's, it's a sad truth. And it's sickening, to be quite honest with you. You know what I'm saying? And if they do give you some some some, some information, 
they give you just enough, you know what I'm saying, for you to lick your, to lick your lips, but not enough to feed your hunger. They leaving shit out. You might as well keep your mouth closed, bro, if you weren't going to give me all the information. Don't mislead me. You know what I'm saying? The shit just not cool. It's just not cool. But I think I have said enough for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, all that good stuff. At Pamula Baby. You all loved here. Don't forget that. Um, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Mm -hmm.